Today I watched the 27th episode of Fearing. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's coming to an end. So this episode was done right in amazing ways. Ways that would make you question why other animes aren't doing it like Fearing. The pacing is near perfect, if that's the thing in anime. Going from showing us casual, amazing art and beautiful story, and then proceeding to consistently drop 10 out of 10 animation fights like they have no budget. This episode is where we really can see how anime can be peaked without having fighting 24-7. And also question, can she beat Goku? So let's get into Fearing is the perfect anime. The last time we were on Fearing, we saw a fight in the Mage's Test and also saw Fern's staff break. This staff was given to her by Heiter, so you know it means a lot. Imagine you receiving a gift to treasure and it having so much memory and love into it. Well, that's Fern's staff. You see, she has been using that for the absolute longest. Not necessarily because she liked it, but because it was given and trusted to her by dear old horny priest. I'm surprised the staff ain't been break, I ain't gonna lie. Her staff broke so Fern and Fern gets into a disagreement early on episode 27. She goes to tell Stark about it first because, well, she's lonely as hell. But she's mostly down because Fern told her to get a new one and throw it away. Elsa and Orihime are overthinking about the test, but I honestly don't think it's that deep, especially since Elsa was finna get clipped. Orihime, on the other hand, was trying to make fun of her to cheer her up, but since Elsa did throw in the towel early on, she's still really down about it, and so she is. She is still overthinking about how she gave up. Fearing pulls up on this dude's shop that can fix any broken staff, no matter how broken. He's also the same one who threw in the towel in the test, by the way, too. No hate, no hate. I'm just saying. She assumes that he can't do it, and so he says... Get the fuck out. But he's a nice guy, so of course he could do it. This is actually a sweet moment on Fearn's part, since we know she has a hard time understanding humans, but still tries to understand or make them happy. Then Fern and Stark runs across the same damn shop. How convenient, huh? The guy that runs the shop then notices them walking by. Oh, my. Fern, speak, damn it. So Fern enters the shop and comes to find her once broken staff laying on the bed looking <laughs> thick as hell. She then comes to her senses and realizes that she can't be mad at Fearing for not understanding since she's an elf and she just be vibing for real. Another perfect look at pacing and storytelling because the ending of the last episode until now was really just them yapping for the story. But we missed out on how much they really skipped over. Like how did they go home after? Or how to start end up with that old ball dude at the beginning of the episode? Or even how they argue over the staff being broken? Thing is, we don't need it. We don't. That's why it's perfect pace in the storytelling because we understand so quick without needing to binge five episodes of random unneeded bore. We get to the part to see who is passing and who is failing the test, but before we have this long boring part about the old ass elf made Siri, I mean I'm kind of joking, to be honest it's not that boring at all. I love watching extra stuff like this that is good like this, but I'm just lazy so Fearn predicts that she will fail her and everyone else besides Fern, as Siri's intuition is always right, and she knows how she is. We get to it and, well yeah, she fails everyone. <laughs> What do you say fuck me for? We get a flashback of him with the hero. Since Fearing was so curious on why he actually picked her up in the group of heroes, she's like, I'm not sure what you got interested in me, pal, but I mean, I guess so, you know what I'm saying? Thanks. He then jogs her memory, and since when he was a little kid and lost, Fearing helped him when he was lonely and showed him a spell to cast a garden of flowers to cheer him up. So in any case, he kind of repaid the duck. Fearing was going to pass no matter what she said according to Fearing, and I thought that's kind of cool. Like, every single time something was to happen with Siri or Fearing, she already predicted. I mean, I guess it's we get for having a thousand year old MC that knows everything. So we head back into it and now we are on Fern who was getting judged by Siri for the Mage's test. She even gave up the opportunity to become Siri's student because Fearing is just a goat. I mean like Fearin has literally been helping her all this time. She showed her an amazing adventure. She's got her stronger. She's made her mature slightly. It's all really good. Like I wouldn't want to like betray my master and like you know what I'm saying choose a different master just because they'll make me stronger. But like my master as it is and I'm saying I'm just gonna get stronger than you are. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure before Fearin ends in the manga that Siri will most likely go against Fern. If not, Fern will automatically just probably become better than Siri, or even stronger. Fearin humbled Siri this entire episode, by the way, not to mention predicting her answers, but also just reading her like a book and knowing Siri from back then. This anime shows you an amazing plot, storytelling, character development, and geography. There are a lot of reasons why Fearin may be bad in people's eyes, or maybe amazing, or maybe even the perfect anime, but to me, this is maybe the reason why I feel like Fearin is the perfect anime.